Well, spooky season is over and it's on to turkey month. Yep, it's time for the November edition of the CNS Newsletter. I'm your host, Texas Matt. This month, we're talking about government intervention and the biggest concern in trucking right now, the proper steps to shut down a trucking company permanently or temporarily. And there's some news about smoking marijuana that you should probably know about. But before we stuff you like a turkey with all these compliance facts and tips, remember that anytime you have a question, just fill out the form in the description below and one of our specialists will start helping with whatever you need. Remember, as much as we want to entertain you with these videos, the real goal is to educate, so please reach out if you have any questions. Okay, open wide and get ready to gobble this up. All right, we touched on this briefly last month, but the FNCSA is considering a rule to make all CMVs have an electronic ID system. In an effort to improve efficiency and effectiveness of roadside inspections, it will allow safety enforcement personnel to wirelessly communicate with CMVs using a unique ID number. Many carriers out there do believe that it will be helpful, but there are also many, at least a thousand based on the comments the FNCSA collected, that think this is just another way for the government to monitor people. I don't get it, and I don't care. They're trying to get in our head with their technology. Next thing you know, they're gonna have handheld devices that you can take anywhere, talk on, send emails on, and uh, track your location. What was that? That's probably them right now. Okay, we're exaggerating a bit. We do understand your frustration with the government intervention, but here at CNS, we believe that if you are following the rules, you should have nothing to worry about. Ultimately, it will save you time and money by allowing you to bypass way stations for basic credential checks. We do have a video covering this in more detail in our Looped In with Luke series. Click the link above to check it out. Here's another update on a hot topic we have discussed a few times, the California AB5 law. AB5 is a law that helps define who can be classified as an independent contractor. There are three prongs, like a trident, and if you answer yes to any of them, you can't be an independent contractor. The main prong that truckers need to worry about is prong B which states the worker performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. So owner operators that want to tackle contracts with bigger companies can't do so unless they become a full-time employee, which of course they don't want to do. It would defeat the purpose of being your own boss as an owner operator. Now, the California Trucking Association is pushing for another injunction and OIDA is right beside them saying California hasn't provided any guidance on how AB5 will be enforced. So once again, it's turning into a waiting game as the fight for truckers' lives continues in California. For a more in-depth look at this topic, check out the Looped In with Luke video explaining it in more detail. The link is above. The ATRI released its 18th annual top industry issues report, and there is good news. Driver shortage isn't taking first place this time. Now it's even worse. Fuel prices has taken the number one spot. This should really be no surprise. Everyone is feeling the hit of rising fuel costs, truck driver or not. But for all you truckers out there, we did a little research for you. Check out our page and video series on the eight steps to prevent recession risk. Step four will go into a lot of detail on what you can do to optimize fuel efficiency. If you have any questions, just fill out the form in the description below. What is a cab report? It's basically a footprint of your life as a trucker that insurance underwriters look at to decide how much your premiums will be. Think about it like this, your cab report is your resume and the underwriter is the employer interviewing you. Their decision is all based on that cab report or your resume. Now imagine your score stinks. Well, there are ways to fix it, but the most important thing is to not lie. Underwriters can see everything. In the same way you can't lie your way into a job. Say you apply for a position as a software developer and you don't know how to write a single line of code. Of course the employer will find out once it comes time to develop something. Underwriters can stop your quote at any point in time if they catch you lying. Now, if you want more info on cab reports, check out the Looped In With Luke video from three more tips to fix that stinky cab score. So, you wanna shut down your trucking You're company. You're crazy, man. No, 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 I'm not crazy, just hear me out. There are fears of a recession in 2023, and this could potentially knock out some owner operators and small businesses for good. But let's say you're proactive and you decided that freight rates are too low, demand is too high, and you just want to pump the brakes on your business and weather the storm. First off, don't be that person that says, ah, the heck with it. I can't make any money like this. I'll just throw all this paperwork away, cancel my insurance, and be done with it. I can get another job or start again later if I want. Well, 
Let me tell you that there are wrong ways of doing this and right ways of doing this. For starters, if you plan on coming back in the next 12 months, we recommend you keep your MC active. This will make starting back up much easier. With an active MC, you will need to maintain insurance, but you can save money by gutting your insurance, which will reduce your premiums. Now, if you're completely shutting down and it's going to be longer than 12 months, we recommend you revoke your authority on the FMCSA's website for the time being. If you don't do this, you'll see fines and it will be much harder for you to start back up. Other things to keep in mind is to fill out the MCS 150 and to withdraw from your drug consortium. There's so much more I can tell you, but that's a much longer conversation. Read the full article below or fill out the form and talk to one of our trucking specialists. Are you a bad enough dude to be a good driver? Well, I hope so. Salone hopes so. Your mother hopes so. But most importantly, your underwriter hopes so. But since accidents can happen, underwriters want to know if you can get a claim resolved quickly to reduce the chance of litigation. One way to help speed up the process of a claim is to file it as soon as the accident happens. You might be afraid that filing immediately will increase your premiums, but waiting actually makes things worse for you. Delayed reporting could increase loss, reduce payouts, and even threaten your coverage. Now, I'm just giving you that one quick tip. If you want the full story, read the full article and check out the In The Loop With Luke video linked above. All right, if you didn't already know, we do offer CDL training. Now, if you're an employer, sending a new hire to a school to get their CDL is not only expensive, but very inefficient. Your one hire will likely be fighting other students to gain just a breadcrumb of experience and knowledge. Don't worry, our CNS Driver Training Center will give you the full loaf. We offer on-site company contract training. On-site training means that your new hire never has to leave your facility. And the best part is that our training courses are one-on-one. -on -one. That means that your driver doesn't have to fight for attention. They will be full of knowledge and they will be driving in no time. Give us a call or check out cnstrains.com for more information. Good news for the 6,500 people that have a simple marijuana offense on your record. Biden has written an official presidential pardon for y'all. That means when you go to apply for a job and they do a background check on you, you won't show up and you can legally say you weren't arrested or convicted. Nice. Now, for you truckers, that doesn't mean to go spark one up. <gasps> You're still going to be drug tested, you big goof. If you have any questions about this, feel free to contact us. There's a form below. It's not you, it's me. That's what you'll be saying when you fill out an OSHA recordable. With everyone struggling to fill positions, the hiring team will put the bare minimum on the job description, which can ultimately backfire. The hiring team really should take the time to update what is expected of a new employee, especially if the position requires heavy lifting or operating machinery. Doing so could save them a lot of money. In 2019, the total cost of workplace injuries were $171 billion. That's a lot of honey for our little bear. With the right job description, the new hires will know exactly what is physically expected of them before they sign on. Well, that does it for this month's newsletter. We hope you found it helpful. We hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our official podcast launch, more Looped In with Luke videos, and if you have any questions, just fill out the form below to get in touch. See y'all in December.